It's Sunday the 31st of July 2016. This is a chart update for GR Engineering. Uh, GR Engineering is a company that specialises in uh, process plant design and other engineering services for mining and oil and gas companies. Um, with most of the, the mining boom companies, uh, mining services companies in the last five years, they were beaten down heavily as a sort of iron ore and coal bubbles burst. Um, but they're just starting to pick up a little bit of steam now on the chart. Um, one of the things about this company is that they predominantly specialize in gold and base metal process plant design. Um, and these are areas that I, I feel are, are good places to be. Um, I've done a lot of videos on a lot of these gold exploration stocks and that sector is really booming at the moment. And um, you know, when they're raising money for, from capital raisings, that money generally goes towards studies and later on toward uh, you know design and um, construction of process plants, unless they're using old old facilities. But generally, new new process plants will be needed. And GR Engineering are definitely the market leader in that. Um, I've got their one of their latest investor presentations here. This is sort of just a a small breakdown. You can see here. Only 150 million shares on issue, so the market cap of this company at a, around a dollar 20 share price is a bit under 200 million dollars. Um, so they fly under the radar; they're almost run, run like a private company. Um, fairly minimal sort of, um, you know, ASX announcements, but very good profitability. You know, you can see here 11 million dollars in uh, EBITDA for last um, last half, and, and they pay a five cent dividend. That was that was only in the half year, so they're paying a 10 cent fully frank dividend um, on a dollar twenty share price, so that's eight eight nine percent yield. Um, that's that's a pretty good pretty good number. Um, but I guess my main reason for investing in this company just in the last couple of weeks is the quality of their, um, their reputation and some of the clients they have. Um, and I think that if this is a real gold bull market, particularly in Australian dollar terms, with their their um, experience in Western Australia, I think they're going to do really well. Um, you can see here, this is, these are their, their recent clients. Um, they've just finished building the uh, deflector plant for Dore Minerals. Um, they've done some feasibility work for Oz Minerals and I think are well positioned for the Carapatina project, which is one of the, will be one of the largest um, you know, base metal projects in Australia in the next few years. Um, you know, might need $200 million for the process plant. Um, Dacian Gold and Gold Road, both $500 million plus market caps. Uh, are the leading to Western Australian development projects um, and uh, GR Engineering is currently doing the feasibility study for both of those. So they're, they're in my mind, they're almost shoe-ins to, um, to be built in the next two years, those plants, um, with the current gold market environment. So GR Engineering are great at getting into the feasibility stage and then converting those into uh, construction contracts. No, engineering procurement and construction contracts, which are really where they, I guess where they make the most of their money. Um, and you see they've also got a good reputation. Good, you know, good. These are other. These are, these are quality companies they're doing work for. And uh, you know, this company was. Um, they don't mention it in these presentations, but the people who founded GR Engineering when they listed four or five years, oh, when it was listed four or five years ago, a lot of them came from uh, JR Engineering, which is another Western Australian firm, uh, which I think was sold to Downer. Many years ago, so that they these guys are you know really in that um, you know a lot of people in Western Australia and clearly getting ahead and early in these projects uh, and uh, ahead of the game. Um, often they take equity positions as well um, in companies that they like, and I guess that they use their reputation to build the reputation of these uh, you know small explorers and, and development companies. So that's the fundamentals of this, and I think you know if you want to be positioned for a, I mean you know there's a saying like in the, in any sort of gold market boom you want to be in the company selling the picks and shovels, and and these are these this is the you know the modern picks and shovels for gold mining is these process plants, and there's not a lot of companies that really specialise that in that in Australia. Um, there's a lot of generalist engineering firms, but only a few that are, are real niche players in in gold and base metals, and I think um, GR in that vein. So. I mean, I think all the fundamentals line up, and often it's great when you see a chart line up with the fundamentals. And when I looked at this this GR engineering chart, I really it, it does tend to line up with the the fundamentals. Um, you know, it's had that run down all the way from when it listed, basically just caught the tail end of that mining boom on listing listing, and then it's tracked down all the way down to you know 30 cents. 
Another thing is it's very highly tell, held um, by most uh, management directors. I think hold 50 or 60 percent of the stock. Um, I think it had that in here. Um, oh, it doesn't have it. Doesn't have the substantial share. Oh, here, here it is. So it is, yeah, 55 percent. Um, and you know, I think that it gets it's quite illiquid for that reason. Not a lot of shares available for trading. Um, but after it's tracked down in the last, you can see here there's sort of a crucial level around this dollar ten level, um, and just in the last few months it's broken out of that. We can see a nice increase in volume here. Um, obviously, a few people are for, following this theme of, of Australian, uh, you know, engineering services companies exposed to the the gold mining industry in particular, um, especially with, with that Australian dollar gold move. Um, but you can see it's broken out really nicely above that that dollar ten level. Um, and you sort of got a bit of a mini head and shoulders pattern here. Here's the inverse head and shoulders. So you got a shoulders and the head here. Um, and it's you know the rule is that you once you break out above the the neckline, you sort of see a, a move to that sort of a repeat of that range above the above the neckline. We've had that, but I think on the on a wider level, if you want to zoom out further, you can see another more another larger head and shoulders pattern. Um, at this sort of at the shoulders at 60 and the, and the head down at that 40 cent level. So I, I think you can see uh, a move, a repeat of that move um, and a target potentially around sort of up to $1.80 in the medium term, short to medium term. I think, you know, given the way this company sort of um, moves and the, the, they don't report that much and there's not a lot of excitement, I think the, uh, you know, those financial results will be the thing that drives the price. And you might see this fairly rapid move. You know, I can see here they won a contract in um, in July, I think, for uh, a base metals project in, in Queensland um, and some also, also some oil contracts. And I think that, you know, when they have those contract wins, you tend to see quite rapid movement with that illiquidity as well. So it wouldn't surprise me. They've got their financial results coming out in August. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see a fairly quick move I mean, a lot of this, I guess, projects don't necessarily relate to profitability, but I think uh, this is a well-run company, and I think eventually, if they're if they're winning all these projects and they're the best position to win further projects in a in a in a gold bull market, um, I think that will translate into profitability eventually. I mean, some of the other companies, I just had a look at the chart for uh, Ausdrill, you know, and they're another company that's exposed to you know the gold price, I guess, and drilling in Africa in particular. Um, you can see here there you know they've had that sort of stealth move that you stop looking at it and then you know you look at it a few months later and it's up five or six fold from the bottom um, so I think these companies that are exposed to uh, gold development projects um, and are going to see that money come from the you know those capital raisings that I talked about earlier they're where you want to be if this is a real gold bull market um, so I think GR engineering will do well in that environment um, and you know and another one I think was uh, was Maca Limited? Um, they spe they specialise in uh, earth moving um, for for mine sites. Um, traditionally, they were they would had a lot of iron ore exposure, but they've they've moved away from that and into uh, into gold as well. So you can see they're up threefold almost from uh, six nine months ago. So that's another good move. Um, so I think you want to follow some of these stories in that engineering services. You've got to be careful because a lot of these companies are going to be in. Um, aren't going to do that well for a while. Those that are just in basic civil contracting or exposed exposed to the um, iron ore industry or coal, I can't see them having major turnarounds with all the cost cutting there. But companies that have a niche and have a very good reputation, in, especially in that Western Australian market, I think you want to be exposed to that sort of uh, those sort of quality names. Um, so GR Engineering, I think, falls into that category and is a, a good good one to follow.